Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Burrito. I am Michael. I am Eric. And uh, this is episode number three. Number we are three. here for episode number three. It is three so already. exciting. Yeah. Three already. And we're and already burrito-less. We are. It's like we're on a diet. Yeah, it didn't take very long for us to not have a burrito here. Uh, poor planning on my part. And mine. Uh, but uh, today, we, uh, we've we been teasing this for weeks now. and uh, awesome. Uh, we are excited about this. Con- I actually did a little bit of research on this, so I am really excited to uh, have this conversation today. Um, you did not do as much research on movies. We'll get to that in a second. Uh-huh. But uh, we are going to talk about aliens, aliens in theology, aliens in Christianity. How do these things coexist if they have if to? If they can. If they can. I mean, we're going to try and uh, we're not going to get an answer today, but we're going to try and get some answers well, we're if we try can. Try to flush something out. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's start uh, by defining some terms. I think okay, that's important. Uh, b- before good. we can even have fun with this conversation, we need to define what we're going to be talking about today. So when we talk about alien life, we are not talking about uh, you know some single celled organism on another planet, or even maybe you know uh, animals similar to a dog. We're not. That's not what we're talking no. about here. We are talking about intelligent. Alien intelligence, extraterrestrial life, intelligence like this. Yeah, but they probably are more more intelligent than this. They usually are more intelligent than us. So uh, we're talking ET. Oh, that was a great movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. That was a good movie. That was like it's like one of my classics. It was like Elliot. <laughs> so that's good. It's good. <laughs> it, it, you know the thing with the the whole thing is, you remember the the show Lost in Space? Or was that before your time? Uh, I, the original I, Lost I know, in Space. I know of it. Not the new stuff. I know of it. I know what you're talking about. The big yeah. robot. And oh, everything. yeah. They're always yeah. on the mission to go find a new land. And My dad would great. be down for that conversation, but yeah. I, you know, I'm a little young for that, I think. Probably not. A little bit. Okay. You have Close Encounters. Close that's, Encounters. That's a great alien movie. Yep. Uh, yep. This is not the purpose of today is just to give you a bunch of movies. But Well, no, but they have big heads and... There's so guys. that's something funny. Uh, Hollywood has given us a picture of what aliens would look like, um, and, and it's always slightly different. But there's always you know it's gray or they're green or and gooey, gooey, a wet alien. Ooh, yeah. that's a bad movie. And there's always a superhero that comes in to save the day because the aliens are usually bad. Like an alien, it was Sigourney Weaver, female, I have no idea what just you're talking about. shooting the aliens. Anyway. Uh, you See, know, I'm not the sci-fi guy, so this is where this is just a good conversation. So, like in Close Encounters, they were short. They short. were they were short, Thanks little short tiny. Joke. They were yeah. kind of like you. So, yeah. I mean, that Thanks. works. We were late. Um, you know, and then you had uh, in the movie Independence Day, the aliens had massive big heads, but there was like this little tiny alien inside the head that was controlling everything. Oh, I do remember that. But that, that part but, I do. The, but the aliens were massively huge. big. They were huge aliens. So, uh, when we talk aliens, I don't know that. We as human beings, even if there was a such thing as an alien, not saying there's not yet, yet, but I don't think we would have any capacity for understanding what that would look like unless they look like us. Yeah, probably not. It, or how they think, because they're more intelligent than we are, always. Yeah, and wh- why is that? Why do we always assume that aliens, if they existed, were are always smarter than us? I don't know, but every time I watch, would you say Star Trek is like a, an alien thing? Sure. Okay. Because they're always on a different planet with a different alien. They're always Klingons. Smart. Klingons are always smarter. I don't know why that is. And you know, uh, Captain Kirk always likes the alien ladies. Yeah, I don't know how that was either. That was just that. <laughs> of course, that's was, true, right? Yes, that is true. He was just weird. But um, yeah, I don't know why. He liked why. because he liked the, the alien creating, ladies more than the human ladies. We're the ones that are creating God's image. That's true. So we'll get into that. I think here in a minute. But so so. <laughs> Why? Why is it? Why, why do human beings? Your head looks kind of like an alien. With, with sometimes, oh, here we go. I'm just saying, just because I'm bald. That's that's what it is. Okay, so why do we as human beings have such a fascination with aliens? Yeah, I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm not the sci-fi guy. Um, like I have a really hard time, in all honesty, just sitting down watching a sci-fi movie. Um, but I think uh, as a I don't know, as a kid growing up, I think it's just that it's what you want. It's something different. The adventure. The exciting. I mean, you think of a series like Star Trek or Star Wars. Oh, man, um, great Sunday night movies. They're, they, were, they have been and they continue to be such powerful franchises for uh, their studios because people have this outsized wonder about things they don't know. 
Uh, you know, it's why people we talked about last week, people have this natural spirituality thing where people just naturally right. believe. So so do you think that Roswell happened? I have no clue. Do you even know what I just <laughs> I have no talked idea. about? He's old and he doesn't even know what I happened in nineteen no fifties. No, go figure. Uh so th- apparently, according to some, uh there was this alien ship or something that crashed in the 1950s in Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, I do know that one. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, and so there there are apparently like three alien bodies. From, you can still go visit it, actually. Uh, that's what they say. Yeah. And, I've been by it. Uh, I, I watched the show because, you know, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that'll watch like History Channel and watch weird shows. But they had this thing about the Roswell thing, and they said there's like three bodies that have been found or were found and, you know, this, that, and the other. It was a compelling tv and i caught myself and i'm like why am i watching this <laughs> like this is this is nuts like why am i why do i care I, I really don't know and that's a lot of the genesis of why we are talking about this because people do care people want to know i and i don't understand why they want to know because even in our own church i've talked to people who are 100 percent on board with the whole alien idea and then i know people who are like yeah that's not even possible sure so that's why we're having this conversation today so but, but I think I think it goes back to that whole idea of wonder. We always have this desire to wonder and to learn more and to, and to live in a fantasy type world. Um, I mean, even as a kid, maybe you maybe you missed this part, but I even grew up pretending I'm the alien creature from a different planet and I have more powers than everybody. Where did I get that from? I have no idea. Well, and and maybe some of that stems from the idea that we don't really know a whole lot about God when you think about it. So, oh, yeah, you know, we don't understand things, and so because we don't understand things, God. One of the things, if you whether you believe in God or not, one of the things we know about God is that He gave us an imagination as human beings. Human beings naturally yep. have an imagination, and uh, and so whether it's what we think of what hell looks like, whether we think it's what heaven looks like, or we think about aliens or fictional characters, it doesn't matter. Human beings have this ability to dream stuff up and to come up with some pretty crazy (laughs) dreams. Huge. If you watch TV at all or movies, you know human beings have a capacity for some really crazy thoughts on all kinds of different subjects. But you brought up the word wonder. As a believer, uh, what role does wonder play in, in a believer's life? Do we take everything just at face value and trust? Or do is it okay to to wonder and to you know look out into the the solar system and be like, man, I wonder what is out there, if anything. I mean, who hasn't who hasn't just laid under the stars, right, and just just looked at that? Uh, yeah, wonder is part of who we are. I mean, we are wonder creations. I mean, we just we want to learn, we want to know. There's got to be more to life than what we have, especially on a dark day. There's got to be more than life than this. I think that goes into this topic itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we wonder, sure we do. We even dream. Dreaming is part of part of our, you know, creativity. Um, yeah. Do you remember the the movie from the eighties, The Explorers? Maybe. It's uh, where they take the tilt a whirl and they turn it into a spaceship, and uh, they the kid dreams up this whole circuit thing, and you don't. Oh, oh man, <laughs> dude! If you have not seen the movie from the eighties, The Explorers. Part of my formative youth growing up. So I, I should go watch it tonight? Oh, dude. It's it's a family-friendly movie. Classic? It's very, very good. Okay. I love that movie. I, we actually, Claudia and I watched it not too long ago, and uh, she couldn't believe I was sitting and watching an 80s movie like that, but she had never, I don't even know if she had seen it. See, I'm not point. the only one. But only it was, man, when I was a kid, that was one of my favorite movies growing up about just aliens, the, the idea of aliens and stuff. It's very funny, but very good. River Phoenix, before he died, he was in that movie. Uh, Ethan Hawke was in that movie, young Ethan Hawke. Anyway, I know, he doesn't watch <laughs> movies like I watch movies. Um, so we're talking about this this role of wonder. Um, yeah. You know, the church as a as a as a organization as a whole um, for for a certain time in our history really didn't like science all that much mm-hmm. so when we talk about this particular issue um, there are some in the church that are really opposed to even having this conversation so why shouldn't we be afraid of this subject why shouldn't we be afraid of having these conversations well I th- I think I think first of all you have to have fun with the conversation um, but as far as being afraid of having it, um, 
I think as Christians, especially in, in church, Nazarene Dome, maybe specifically, I don't know about other denominations, but uh, we tend to fall into this, this really close, tight mindset mm-hmm. um, to where something like this topic, we're afraid to open it up a little bit because what if there is something out there? What if there is a little green man on a different planet? Um, do they need Jesus? Of course they need Jesus. Well, who's going to get them there? Well, maybe we'll talk about that in this episode later. I don't know. But, but I think having this conversation um, really has an, a potential to solidify your own faith in who Jesus is in your own life. So playing devil's advocate, does it have the potential to ruin faith? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think you can enter a fantasy world and uh, you start to create your own religion, your own faith, your own belief system. Yeah, you bet. I don't want to offend anybody, but Scientology, anybody? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, does it, does it stem from aliens? I don't know, but that's kind of where you end up. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, as we I enter... I you said that online. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not really... Is uh, anybody watching this? Is Tom Cruise watching? Maybe. You might have to worry about that. Uh, no, but the, I mean, the reality is faith is... Before you can even enter into this conversation or even begin to think about this subject, you really have to have faith. You have to trust that God is who he says he is. And we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, if you don't have that grounding in faith, how can you even possibly begin to consider what faith would look like for a potential intelligent life somewhere else on another planet? I mean, that's, you can't even enter into that conversation if you don't have faith in God in the first place, um, in in an, in a theological discussion. Right. Fair. Yep. So what's the Holy Spirit's role in, in that, uh, faith journey then? Just well, in short. In short, I mean, the Spirit is what moves us, right? It's what drives us. Um, I think the best creativity that we have as Christians comes from the Holy Spirit. But the only way you get that is being in tune to the Holy Spirit. If I want to be like a total sci-fi geek, um, I'm going to immerse myself in the sci-fi world, right? Sure. That's just not my personality. I just That's just not me. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the sci-fi world. Um, not because I think it's wrong, just... My mind just doesn't see the, the point a lot of times, um, <laughs> but, but it doesn't drive me. Like I know I've had students come through my student ministry where it just drives them, and they and they have a hard time coming out of that made up reality, to find the spirit working in their own life. They can't do both, so one of them has to be a driving force. And I don't I don't see anything in the Word of God that says that there's not alien life, but I don't see anything that says that there is. Sure. So the Bible is not, not clear. It's not specific in any of that. Um, but we can't be afraid to have the conversation, have fun with it. Sure. Um, but you got to know, you got what, what drives you. Is it the Holy Spirit? Because I think that's the driving power in our faith, right? We get the Holy Spirit as our, as our gift, our, you know, our comrade in, in ministry um, versus the galaxies, mm. which are huge. Well, and, and, you know, like you said before, I think every one of us, uh, whether you're someone who believes in Jesus as your Savior or not, uh, I think if we if we go outside and we look in the evening, you know, in the nighttime, especially out here in eastern Oregon where there is nothing, um, you can actually see stars here. Um, you look up and you, you just, you have to be amazed, whether it happened by happenstance or it happened on purpose. Do aliens fly amazing. shooting stars? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that, that was a question asked by a Christian. Hey, there goes a spaceship. I'm like, what? Are you, I, I thought they were kidding. Are but, you talking about the hale people? That, no, you know, not the hale people. Drink the Kool-Aid? Or, or, yeah, or... none of those. Okay. No, this happened right here, Eastern Oregon, part of Hermnaz. And if you're watching this, sorry, I'm not making funny. I'm just telling your life story. Um, we were out here in the back, and there goes a shooting star. And the person was like, wow, I wonder who's driving that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we had laughed, had a good time. And then they were like, serious? They want to know, like, what planet, what galaxy, what do they look like, green or gray? I don't know. And I was like, I walked away from that going like, why did I, how did I end up in Eastern Oregon? <laughs> Sorry, but I still love you. You know who you are. So one of the, the troubles, I think, for just your average believer is that we tend to put God in a box. We do. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's creation, which, you know, someday on this podcast we may talk about the creation versus evolution subject, but take any subject that has to do with theology in any way, we immediately want to put God into this box of, this is what God is, this is what God does. 
Do you think that's fair to say when it comes to the idea of aliens that we put God in a box? Well, I think if we really st- do, I think it's fair that we put him in a box. That, well, no. That, what I'm saying is, do you fair? Do you think it's fair that some Christians, not all certainly, but many Christians, will put God in a box and say it's not possible oh. that God yeah. created intelligent beings elsewhere? Well, but He did. Um, so yeah, nothing. First of all, with God, nothing's impossible, right? We need to just admit that. Christian or non-Christian, nothing's impossible. Even atheists will say nothing is an impossible. Uh, for your belief system, sure, right? It may not be a God belief system, but it's a belief system. So if you believe in God, that's your belief system, which means nothing's impossible. Aside that the Bible says nothing's impossible. Um, so they're back on track on God. Uh, God is bigger. God is bigger, always bigger. But um, but yeah, we do put God in a box. But if we think about aliens, like the term alien and intelligent creations, um, angels and demons. God did create some another being other than us as humans that are intelligent, capable, hu- capable beings out there in the ethos somewhere. Right. Yeah. So anything's impossible. Um, whoa! The aliens are calling. Do you hear that? Or yeah. is that just me? That was my phone. Did I just Sorry. hear that? Okay. It's actually our camera, which is really kind of funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, we put God in a box, and we shouldn't because. Really, anything is possible, but yet the Bible doesn't say one way or the other, so it kind of leaves that part of our imagination to imagine. Mm. But we can't forget the Holy Spirit. We can't forget the angels. We can't forget the demons. Um, we, we can't forget those uh, sections of Scripture that really talk about aliens. And we're not talking about aliens in the Bible of, you know, our brother coming from a different country into our borders. Right. right? We're not talking right. about that kind of alien. We're this intelligent life is what we're talking that's about. That's why that's why the definition matters. Yeah, exactly. So so if nothing is impossible with God, then let's let's talk about in an abstract way, a very big picture way. What does the idea let's say take devil's advocate, there is intelligent life on another planet. Uh, God has created them. What are some of the questions that automatically come to your mind? If God created them? Mm-hmm. So when it comes to Christianity, what are some of the questions that you think of? Yeah, so I start thinking about okay, well, how many galaxies are there? I mean, <laughs> a lot. How, what's our what's our range? I mean, if we're really talking God created life on other planets, well, how many planets? Or are we the experiment? I mean, do they have sin on the other planets? I mean, we had sin on this planet, but maybe we're the goofballs. And I mean, that's what I think sometimes. Maybe we're the one, the one of only you know millions of beings somewhere else. Who knows? Yeah. And, and I listen to people like uh, like when I was reading that, the Vanderbilt University, um, you know, they start saying, hey, there's going to be like 800 new uh, planetary systems by 2045. Wow. 800. So that's 800 new new systems, new galaxies. And every galaxy has how many gazillion, you know, planets in them. Um, so I, I look at that and I read those articles like that. I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that's, there's no way. But yet, maybe. I don't know. Anything's possible. So, so I start thinking, okay, well, if there's sin on the other, other planet, who, who's their savior? Mm. Um, I start thinking about, do we need to send missionaries to those planets? I mean, how cool would that be for a worker witness trip, guys? I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're going to Mars. We're going to go, because somebody needs to do that. But I really believe that if, if there really is life on another planet, and there is sin on another planet, God is still God. His character doesn't change. Yeah. And God is going to care for them. He's going to give them what they need for salvation. And um, I mean, eternity, there's nothing in our Bible that says there's a different eternity for a different galaxy. Sure. Um, and it there's a different Savior. Well, and, and one of the other things that I think is important is, it, you know, you just kind of started this, but I'm going to go even farther back. Mm-hmm. We know where the universe begins. Mm-hmm. So anyone who would suggest that aliens are older creatures than us wouldn't really make sense in the terms of the creation story. Good point. Because God is very specific through Moses in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's very specific on how the universe was created, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars. And so, yes, there may be. I I think it is, it is certainly possible, um, maybe not likely in my, in my estimation, but it's, it's certainly possible that there are beings, intelligent beings on other planets, but there are a lot of theological questions that now have to be posed if we are to assume that that's true. Right. But even though you pose all those questions, the whole Genesis account is, is pointing us to that God 
is in existence, and everything in existence belongs to God. So here's a basic stupid question. Can we have stupid questions of the show? Sure. Especially we, a show on aliens and Christians? I'm sure we'll have lots okay. of them throughout right. the time. All right. uh, so, Pastor Eric, let me ask you this simple question. Very stupid, okay. but simple. Okay. If God created alien life, as we're talking about, why isn't it in the Bible? Yeah, good, good question. I don't know. There's a Wouldn't lot of it be important enough for us to know? Well, you would think so, unless we're the experimental case, and then we wouldn't know. Wouldn't it be possible to then ask the same question, why don't we know about most of Jesus' life? That would be true. From 12 <laughs> years to 30 years, we don't know anything. 18 full years of his life has just disappeared. Gone. You know, And we face a lot of cultural issues, in all honesty, that the Bible doesn't pick the words that we know and throws it in there, so therefore it's not in the Bible, so therefore we can have our own stands. I think aliens is one of those things. It's not in the Bible, we can have our own stands, but that's not really true at all. I think we, we have to know our faith is only our faith because of what Christ did on the cross, because he loves us. Okay. So you had said that no matter what, God's character doesn't change doesn't in change. this. So if he created beings other than angels and demons and humans... Because we know about those, right? We know that's that's concrete. We yeah, know what a party that is: angels, demons, and humans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, demons and angels is kind of redundant because demons are angels, but right. Um, but the nevertheless, dark, the dark side. Yeah, the dark side of angels, I guess. Um, but if he created Zoltanians, I don't know. I just made that up. Okay, good. you know, somewhere on planet Zoltan. That was good. Okay, that was good. Um, How is it possible, and this is something I can't wrap my mind around, if God created them in the same way that he created us, God, through the prophets, through other means in the New Testament um, and the Old Testament, throughout Scripture, God says that we are his beloved, right? We are his—I mean, we were higher than angels, right? Mm Mm-hmm. How does that jive with the idea that there are beings on other planets? I don't know. That's that's honestly that's my biggest stumbling block in this conversation is that if we tr- if we believe that, if we trust that 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 we are God's special creation being human beings. I don't see how it could be po- I mean not that it's not possible, let me rephrase. I don't see how it fits into the narrative of scripture for there to be aliens on another planet that are intelligent. E.T. would be our brother. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. And, you know, the idea that Jesus came and did something special for, for us. us. Yep. Well, if he did it in, you know, Planet Zoltan for the Zoltanians. Right. Well, then it's not all that special then. What he did for us is not that special because we're not the only ones that got it. Right. You know, we have to remember, too, that we're uniquely made by a uniquely made uh, system, and it's God's system. Um you know, we've been made in his image. Um, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says that God had one eyeball um, or, <laughs> or he's got one big head. I mean, what I do read in the book of Revelation, I mean, if you want to get, you know, theological, I see all kinds of s- creatures and, and beasts. I mean, it talks all about those things. Some of those things are pretty wicked scary. I mean, if you, for what we yeah. know, We right? talked about it on this, sun- this last Sunday. We, we did. I mean... Eyes all over the body, including under their wings and in their wing pits. And I was like, really? Wing Seriously? pits. I mean, wing pits. I mean, that's what they are, right? Wing you pits. You ever think about that? A bird? They got, they got pits. Um, and, uh, this conversation just got going. a whole lot Woo. weirder. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of uh, things that we could do with our minds on this topic. But you know what? Um, we're uniquely made. And, uh, and I think God uh, was a very unique individual, I would say, right? Oh, definitely. Uniquely God and man. So th- that brings us to, I think, where we need to ha- get for this conversation. Let's talk about the unique n- human nature of Jesus Christ, because we kind of talked about him a little bit last week, and, you know, I mean, we're pastors, so we're going to talk about Jesus. That's just part of who we are. Jesus was uniquely a human being, but he was not fully human, as as we would determine it, right? I mean, he's fully God and fully human. But he is fully divine. He is he is entirely from another place. He's from another place. 
in 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 essence, he is an alien. Well, he says, "I'm not from this place. I'm not from this world." And we know that he was present at creation, mm-hmm. right? We know that he's present in heaven currently now, and he's going to come back here sometime. Mm-hmm. So, talk to talk to our listeners, our, our viewers, about the unique human nature of Jesus. The unique human nature of Jesus, the human side of Jesus. So it always boggles my mind. So we're talking on aliens, right? So here, here Jesus is in heaven and perfect environment, perfect people around him. And all of a sudden the angels get in this little tiff war, right? Lucifer gets in a little tiff war and, and all of a sudden, you know, we have fallen angels and now there's demons and long story and all of that. But, um, but those are all wonderfully created by God. And then God comes and says, you know, as man, I'm going to earth. And uh, I come as this baby, and they're going to wrap me in these cloths. They're going to put me in a manger. You know, I'm going to sleep with the dog or in the, the donkey poo and, you know, whatever. And, and this is where I'm going to start my life. Well, we see that. I'll go all the way up through all the miracles that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, but yet fully God is what the Bible says, and fully man. I can't comprehend that as a human being. Now, maybe as an intelligent life source, I can comprehend that. But I'm not that source. Um, and my, I think my Bible tells me that I can't comprehend that. It also tells me I, I won't see the face of God. I can't handle seeing the face of God. But yet, God is so unique in how He can be Father, Son, and, and Holy Ghost. How He can be Father and Son. And how the Son can be both God and, and man. And when Scripture says He comes and He takes the, our sin on, I go back to the garden. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus is there, and he's, he's praying, he's saying, Dad, listen, if there's any other way I can get out of this, going to the cross thing, show me, and I'm going to take it. Um, that's one of my favorite passages in Scripture, because I, that's where I relate. So many times I sit to, there, and I go to God, God, if there's any other way I can do this, show me. Well, and he does it on the cross, too. He, he, he does. And, and then all of a sudden, here I am, I'm going, okay, Jesus, you went all the way, and I don't get how you said that you took all of our sins on because you're God, but yet you're man, and you had to die because you're man so that you could be God. And it, you know, it, your head could just swim around in a circle in this stuff. My, uh, that's unique. I, I, I know somebody who uh, I was kind of prefacing this conversation with them and trying to trying to kind of gauge some of their thoughts. And one of the things that we talked about is this idea. And this this we don't have time to really get into this deep, but talking about just just dimensions you know, as opposed to worlds, and that, you know, our God lives above time and space. Mm-hmm. So not just space. I mean, it's not like Jesus is, or God and Jesus are, you know, somewhere on another planet. No, they're above the planets. They're above time itself. There's not a dimension. And it's, it's if you look at this, if this was a marker, it would be a little easier than my pen. I should have brought a marker in here. If you look at it from this angle, what shape does it make? A uh, tube. A line. No, think of it in two dimensions. Oh. Um, it's like a rectangle, right? Okay, sure. So it's like a rect- uh, very skinny, skinny rectangle. rectangle. Mm-hmm. But then if you look at it from this perspective, what... It's a sh- bullet. It's elk season. <laughs> Always to the hunting. Okay, so in two dimensions, Cylinder. it's a circle. Yeah. No, three dimensions a would be a, it's a, it's, it's a circle, okay? okay? When God looks at our lives this way, God looks at all of time this way, it's not just a circle. It's not just a square. He can go up, above, beyond. He can actually open it up and look on the inside like I can. He can put himself inside this pen. That's how capable God is. And so when we talk about the alien conversation, again, anything is possible. God is capable of doing anything, and we have to leave the room room for the possibility that there are intelligent beings elsewhere. It is certainly a possibility. How probable? I guess that's up for debate. I have an answer. Do you? I don't think there is. <laughs> I think both of but us yet, come I down. <laughs> both both of us come down on. We don't really think that there are aliens on other planets. Again, my my argument is, I think, is the most compelling one. I don't see how that fits in the narrative of the Bible and in mm-hmm. the story of God. I don't see how that makes sense. But again. I can't put God in that box as we were talking about before. I have to trust that if 
if that is a reality, if there are alien life or there is alien life somewhere else, you know what this is going to do? If you're out there watching and you're like all on the alien side of life and you're, and you're thinking like this conversation is totally just whacked, um, let us know. Uh, sure. Give me, try to change our minds on this. Um, I'm but, open to having my mind changed about it. I, sure. I have my mind changed, but I'm going to need scripture to back it. And, um, you know, I, I don't have a scripture to, to back that. So, so we're not bashing the non-alien or the no, alien No, no, not at all. Except to say, uh, it might be true. Yeah, I mean, I, I, with, no matter what side you fall on, the important thing here, the important thing is what we had five points that we wanted to talk about. It's okay to be... To have wonder as a believer, it's okay to look up at the 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 cosmos and be just in awe of what God created because it is unreal. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, we can look at our own planet and be amazed at what God did, but when you look at the vastness of our solar system and our universe, unbelievable. And when I talk about the shooting star and who's driving it, it's okay to think that, sure, right? But you got to know that it's a shooting star, right? It's, there isn't a pilot to it, except God's finger. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's and part of the cosmos. Don't be afraid of having these conversations. No. They should be fun. They like, are. have fun with it. I, right. E.T., yeah, hey, if there's an E.T. with his little finger up, great. That'd be, that'd be sweet. I mean, I would love yep. to meet him. Uh, nothing is ever impossible with God. Always keep that in your mind. Um, no matter what the answer to these questions are, God's character never, ever changes because God is unique. Yes. And the in unique unique nature of who Jesus was mm-hmm. shows us that we can trust who God is. Like yep. the fact that God came into our time and space to rescue us is unbelievable. Our God is huge and, and awesome. I, yeah, and we we can't forget. Now we said this, but you can't forget that if there are aliens on other planets that are intelligent life if they've rebelled against God, God's got it covered. You know, that's sure. not our responsibility. However, I wouldn't mind being a missionary to Mars. <laughs> I mean, or, or or pick a planet. I mean, that'd be kind of really cool to go, right? And sure. That, so, Yeah, I think, it, you know, and this conversation's been fun. I, uh, I really was looking forward to this conversation. I think, okay, look, we didn't give you an answer, yes or no, there's aliens or not aliens. Uh, we certainly didn't give you an answer as to yes or no, does this jive with theology? We just asked a lot of questions, yep. and if you're interested in this, there's a lot of information out there. I mean, there's a lot. I had a hard time sifting through the different websites and well, thoughts. But that's a good point, though, because as as we read, as we research for this, there are lots of theologians out there, right? I can't say they're all holiness theologians, but there's a lot of a lot of theologians from different religions and backgrounds that'll that'll buy into their definitely is intelligent life in, sure. in other places. Yep. And there are people on the other side too. There are, but on those on those theological issues, when I dug it just a little bit deeper, it didn't take me very long to see that Jesus was not part of their theology. Mm. It was a God theology, not a Jesus theology. Huge difference. Sure. Huge difference. Hey, and it is possible that uh, if there are is intelligent life on another planet and they send Jesus's death Maybe it was good enough for them too. You think it covered from planet to planet? Maybe galaxy to galaxy. Hey, not going to put God in a box. We, we didn't think about that. That's no. kind of cool. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. Don't have time to talk about it uh, though. Way. Oh, so his east from the west. <laughs> it could be like one end of the solar or the galaxy to wow. the other one. One. Uh, one planet on this side of the universe to that side of the universe. I've just always gone east coast to west coast. I heard. Okay, I'm not endorsing Rob Bell publicly here, but I am going to say this. I saw one message that he did that was really great about this. doesn't matter if the universe is getting bigger or if you look at it as it's getting smaller. It's weird no matter what. Weird no matter what. It is weird no matter what. It gets weirder both ways. Uh, Smallness, bigness of the universe. It's just weird. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. It has been uh, a Tell them how they can see us. Yeah, so... Obviously, if you're watching this, you're watching on Obviously. Facebook. Um, you can also go to iTunes. We are on iTunes. How Got cool there, is boom, that? On that. Uh, we are on Spotify and several other different platforms that we don't even, we've never even heard of before. We have a really great yeah, partner. YouTube. 
in uh, yeah YouTube. Well, not yet. We're not working yet. on that. We're working on that. Um, but Anchor Anchor FM. Just want to give a shout out to them. They've been awesome about helping us with our podcast, getting it out. So um, it is. Uh, it has been great. And uh, what are we talking about next? We are heading week? down. Now this is not a surprise because it's Thanksgiving season, right? Yeah. And uh, compassion. Uh, what does compassion Ooh, that's look an like? Interesting conversation. Uh, it, it is because I think we're going to go. We talked about being putting God in a box. I think with compassion, that's a box all by itself, and we never seem to get out of the box of compassion. I think there's a lot more we can do with compassion than just the box that we do every holiday season. So hmm. be ready. That should be an interesting conversation. We'll be with us next week, Tuesday, 10 a.m., right here on Facebook Live. And I'm bringing a burrito next week. So, And we will have burritos. Make sure you have yours, some coffee, and let's have some fun. Love you. See ya. See ya.